Hey everybody, it's Joris Trombley with Japanese from Zero, and in the next 13 minutes and 38 seconds, we're gonna talk about Machigaeru. All right, let's just jump into it. We're gonna be talking about Machigaeru. We're going to attach it to a few verbs, and it's going to mean to be doing that particular verb wrong. Now, this could be applied to many different verbs, but there are a few that are very common that we'll discuss in just a moment. And I hope you stick around for some really fun examples in the actual real life media. All right, uh, there's two types of machigairu. There's this one that we know we're gonna talk about, machigairu, which means to mistake or to confuse. But there's also this one, chigairu, without the ma, and it means to be different or to be wrong. But it really essentially will mostly mean the same thing. Let's go ahead and look at some common occurrences. And these are ones that even come up in the dictionary. They're so commonly used. And probably if you know these, you're gonna know about 90% of everything you need to know. Matter of fact, if you want a shortcut, just learn these, okay? One of them, which is very good to know if you're learning Japanese is yomi machigaeru, to read something wrong. Notice we have the verb yomu, to read. And if we made yomu into uh, I will read, the must form it would be yomi mas. We just drop the mas, we're left with yomi, yomi machigaeru. Now, not only can you misread a character, a hiragana, a kanji, you can also misread the situation. For example, you know that word, kuki ga yomenai, kuki yomenai, means cannot read the air. So you could literally, kuki wo yomi machigaeta, I misread the air. What that means is you are situationally unaware. You misunderstood what was happening. So a lot of times if a guy, for example, he's hitting on a girl, she doesn't like him. Well, he's definitely KY. Japanese like to say KY. He's kuki ga yomenai. He is situationally unaware. He's clueless, all right? Then we have kiki machigairu, which is also super important to learn in Japanese because you're gonna hear things wrong. If someone says something to you wrong, and you responded and they're like, what? Oh, maybe you misheard it, right? So you could say, kiki machigaimashita. I heard it wrong. Then we've got, mi machigairu. This is to see something wrong, okay? This is, you looked at it and you saw it wrong. That's not exactly what it should have been. Then we've got this one. Now we're gonna jump into the chigairu one. Now this one, uh, although sometimes these can be uh, uh, interchangeable, this one is pretty much always ne chigairu. Nechigairu means to sleep wrong. That means like you, you sleep wrong and you, you kind of, you, you, you mess up your neck or your back or something. And normally if someone says nechigaita, it means they hurt their neck or their back or something, right? So uh, used to be a thing that happened to me a lot, but now that I've strengthened my core, it doesn't. All right, then we've got michigairu. Now we're looking at something that's kind of different from mi machigairu. Mi machigairu is to look at something wrong. Okay, but michigairu is to not recognize. You're not recognizing something properly. All right, and we will see an example of that uh, coming up. I think we will. Yeah, we will actually. All right, and then this one, as you know, in Japan, uh, people do not wear their shoes inside their house. And if you've been to Japan or most Asian countries, they don't wear their shoes in their house. Please let me know if you're wearing your shoes in your house. It's a little bit embarrassing. You should not. It's disgusting. Okay, it's dirt. If you if you ever looked at what's in a man's bathroom, if you're gonna let your husband or your boyfriend walk in your house, or if you're a man and you walk in your house with your shoes on, you are very dirty. Don't do that. Stop that. So, uh, but what can happen in Japan is because everyone takes their shoes off when they leave the house, it's possible that they could haki chigairu, put someone else's shoes on. They could put the wrong shoes on. They could uh, flip the shoes. They could be wearing walking out with your wife's shoes. All right. So. When we learn new grammar, a common thing that everyone likes to do is look at the dictionary. And often, unfortunately, the dictionary doesn't help like you want it to. There we go. So we have machigairu, we look it up, says to make a mistake, to commit an error. Down below we have to confuse or to make some, uh, to mistake something for something else, which seems about right in this case, right? But okay, so how is that different from chigairu? To change, to alter, to make, uh, a mistake again wow so right here let's ignore everything below that but we have to make a mistake here and we have to make a mistake here so like i said 
pretty much similar. Now, there are geniuses in the comments that will tell you the exact difference between machigaeru and chigaeru. Okay, I promise you they exist. YouTube comment geniuses are everywhere. Thank God for them. <laughs> All right, so moving on, um, we have Twitter. We have a really great Twitter example that I want to go through. Uh, let me go ahead and look at it here. So uh, this is a really, I'm really happy I found this example. It's really fun. Uh, so she says, I'll read it through uh, and then we'll, we'll go through and analyze it. She says, non alcohol beer wo normal kori beer to kiki machigaeta ue ni nido kiki shita no ni mata normal kori beer ni kikoete chou yukuri itte moratte non alcohol beer to itte ita koto o likai shita toyu kiki machigae ga arimashita. Let's break it down. It's pretty funny. Those of you that understood it right now are probably laughing. Uh, let's go ahead and look at it. So here we have non alcohol. Alcohol means alcohol. Non in front is non. Non alcohol beer. Beer. Okay. Now we have an object marker following that. That means that anything that has an object marker means that the verb is going to act on that thing. It's the object of the verb. So we could just jump ahead to the verb if we wanted to. Non alcohol beer o machigaeta, right? Kiki machigaeta. Okay. I misheard non alcohol beer. What did she mishear it as? Normal kori beer to. Okay. She misheard it as normal ice beer. So altogether it's non alcohol beer o normal kori beer to kiki machigaeta. Kiki machigaeru is one of the patterns that we learned to mishear. Kiku can mean to listen, to hear, or to ask, as we will soon find out. Okay. Uh, now, this thing, ueni, after, kiki machigaeta ueni means on top of mishearing non alcohol beer for normal ice beer. Okay. Nido kiki shita no ni, even though I asked twice, mata again, normal kori beer ni kikoete, I heard it as normal ice beer. Okay. Now, I want to show you something here. Remember we said that kiku can mean to be uh, to ask or to listen or to hear. It's all context. Everything is context. And in the same exact tweet, we have it used twice, two different ways. So kiki machigaeru means to hear it wrong. But nido kiki means to ask again. Okay. So contextually, same verb. Kiku, kiki, kiki is the noun version, the noun version of kiku. All right. Anyway. Uh, continuing on, she says, I had them say it super slow. That's what the cho does. Non alcohol to ite ita koto. The fact that they were saying non alcohol beer, o, that's the object, likai shimashita. Likai shita. I comprehended. Okay? Now, after that, we have to you. Now, to you is this magical thing that encompasses everything before it. Okay? What type of kiki machigai? Kiki machigai is a mishearing. Did she have? She had a mishearing to you everything before that. Okay? Now, we'll end on this really fun fact. Look at this kanji right here. This arimashita. Now, some of you might not have ever seen that aru has a kanji. Well, it does. And if you write it in hiragana like most Japanese do, aru can mean to have an inanimate object, a non-living object, to have it, or it can mean that that object exists. It's existence or have. It means to have or to be, okay? But when you write it with this kanji, it only means to have, aru, okay? But if you write it with this kanji, it only means to exist. This is why most Japanese people just write it in hiragana, and why you should too, it avoids having to learn two separate kanjis. All right, moving on. We're going to jump back and we're going to look at some YouTube examples right. Give me a second right here. All right. So this is a, a chiropractor, a seikaishi uh, somewhere in Japan that has a video. And it says right here, it says, Nechigaita kubi. Nechigaita kubi. Kata senaka. No naoshikata. 
All right. So nechigaita, if you remember, means to sleeping on wrong, to sleep on something wrong. So it's a a neck that you slept on wrong, or kata, a shoulder that you stepped on wrong, or senaka, your back. So these are the common things that get hurt when you nechigairu on them, okay? And naushikata means how to fix it, and then it says self stretchi. So there's self stretches. Let's just go ahead and see what he says here. え、今日は寝違えた首、肩、背中の直し方、セルフストレッチということで、え、寝違えた時に、え、自分でできる、え、セルフストレッチ。寝違えた時に自分でできるセルフストレッチ。セルフストレッチ。Self that you can do by yourself when you have misslept on your neck or shoulder or back. Notice how everything is nice and reversed. Keep that in mind. Reversing things is the best way to take a Japanese sentence and translate it into English. All right, let's look at this next one and final example of this video. Now, uh, those of you that watch YouTube a lot, you probably know that there is a really cool channel called Brightside. Not sponsored, but I once binged a ton on Brightside until I saw a video that they did about Japan and it was completely wrong. But either way, Brightside also has a Japanese version called Brighto Saido. And you can, I would recommend, why not watching that? You'll learn a lot of Japanese and you'll be able to uh, get a lot of short, quick content. But this is one, and it says right here, Kao o michigairu hodo kaete shimau yotsu no mono. And we'll translate that in a second by doing that reverse technique that I just talked about. All right, here we go. Ah, by the way, I shouldn't play a lot of this because these guys are pretty strong on their copyright. So we'll just play a little bit of it. If we just go from the very reverse of this, all the grammar will line up perfectly in English, okay? Yotsunomono, four things, kaete shimau, that will change, end up changing, hodo, so much, michigairu, that you cannot recognize your face, right? Four things that will end up changing your face so much that your I think we have to have face in there twice. Four things that end up changing your face so much that you can't recognize it. Okay, that's what that is. Let's listen one more time. All right, uh, if you want to watch that video, there will be no link in the description, but uh, you could probably find it by putting those exact words into your browser. All right. There we go. Guys, thanks for watching. As you know, we do have five Japanese textbooks. If you'd like to learn more Japanese, you can certainly go get your own copy up at Amazon.com, Book Depository, and Kinokuniya. You can even go there. Uh, that's a big famous Japanese bookstore. Not in Japan for some reason, but in America, all the Kinokunias have us. And of course, you can order from Barnes & Noble. And if you live in a weird place like the Philippines, which I seem to always call out as a weird country, you can get it on Book Depository. Thank you. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Listen, there's one video I want to show you on iru eru verbs, which came up a little bit in this video. It's right here. Iru eru verbs, very important concept. Also, I think this video is something you probably want to watch, so go ahead and check that out when you're done watching the other video. Oh yeah, and by the way, please subscribe right here. Subscribe. It's about time you did it, if you haven't.